If you've been anxious about your future or afraid of what's next, then today's episode is for you. I'm going to show you how you can take your life from surviving to thriving, and it all starts with getting rid of the fear. What's going on, my people? Welcome back to another week here on the Mentality of Success. Uh, I'm Joshua Washington, and today we're going to talk about fear. Now, I have previously took you all through the three C, what I call the three seeds of limitation. And what does that mean? What are the three seeds of limitation? Well, the three seeds of limitation are three seeds that limit your life from the success that you were meant for. Now, today I'm not going to go through all of those limitations, but we are going to hit on one very important limitation. Um, and this happened, I was actually asleep the other morning. And as I was, you know, coming back to <laughs> coming back to life, I felt this strong like sense and voice in my mind say, tell them, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. There's so much in your life right now that is ahead of you, but it's being blocked off by fear. There's so much in front of you, but it's being blocked by fear. And if you're going to take your life from surviving to thriving, we have to get past the fear. And so where do we start with this? Well, when we talk about the three C's of limitation, we're only talking about one, and that's the seed of fear, if you haven't figured it out by now. Um, the first thing, though, is to talk about where this seed is planted. Where does the seed of, of fear plant? Like, where do we find this? Because here's the thing, your heart is not located here like many of us think it is. Like, we, we think our heart is here. But it's not where the heart is. That's where you're, you know, the heart that keeps you alive. But we have two hearts. We have the heart that's within our body that keeps the blood pumping. And then we have the heart of our mind. And that's where our emotions live. That's where the things that cause us to thrive and the things that cause us to be limited live. And when it comes to fear, I think I've, I think I've shared this with you all before. Fear is really a survival mechanism. That's why we're talking about going from surviving to thriving. Fear is really only meant in your life to help you survive. That's all that it's meant for. It's, it was never meant to be something that's used in your daily like usage. Your daily usage, if we were to look at like a bar graph of fear, like a percentage point of fear, your daily usage of fear should be very, very minimal. Actually, I would say if you live in the United States, well, certain, let me say that again, certain parts of the United States, <laughs> you should have very low daily fear. Some of you may say, Josh, you don't know the neighborhood I live in. I grant it. I understand. But when it comes to your future, the fear should be limited. Why? Because when we look at fear, fear lives in what we call the amygdala. And if some of you have been keeping up with uh, this podcast for a while now, you know I gave a whole, I got really passionate about the amygdala <laughs> on a previous episode. But that's where fear lives. And the amygdala is really used as a fight or flight mechanism within our mind. It's used to help us know, okay, there's danger there. Fear sparks. Now we got to make a quick decision. There's a big bear coming towards me. The amygdala screaming, run. I think this, I mean, some people say you should lay down and play dead. I ain't laying down and playing dead with no bear. I'm sorry, I'm taking my chances on these two feet. <laughs> you have to catch this dinner. <laughs> Anyways, listen, fear lives. That's where fear lives. And, but it's not meant to guard and lead our lives. And that's where the, the three C's of limitation came from. Because here's what I discovered in my time. Fear lives in the mind. And so therefore, that seed that lives in the mind, whatever we feed it, however we water it, determines how it grows. However you water it determines how it grows. So if you're going to water the seeds of that seed of fear, 
that it's always going to be there. It's always going to sit in the amygdala. But if you want to water in a way, water it in a way that it does not take over your life and take over your future and, and limit you from thriving, then there's there's really four areas you need to watch. And they all start with an E. So let's go to the board. There's four areas you want to watch if you are trying to rid yourself of this debilitating fear. If you're trying to go from surviving and seeing every new thing in your life as a big black bear running towards you or seeing every opportunity as this overwhelming thing that's going to scare you into uh, um, into um, what's the word I'm looking for? Into submission. Meaning submitting to the fear and just becoming paralyzed. If you're going to avoid that, then these four things you need to be mindful of so you can water them the right way. So you'll see here on the board, we have fear written really big. So I want you to see it. If you're on, even if you're on your phone, if you're listening on the podcast, you want to go catch this one on YouTube so you can see this as well. But here are, they all start with E. The first place you need to guard or make sure you water well is this right here. These two bad boys right here. Actually, I wrote ear and I meant eyes. <laughs> These two bad boys right here. Your eyes. Your eyes. Do you know that our brain operates in images? Our brain does not really see like or hear words. Our brain thinks and operates within images. And so when it comes to fear, oftentimes the fear can rise based on what we see. There have been times in my life where what the images in my mind that I wanted to believe, the opportunities that I wanted to, you know, believe were in front of me, you know, seeing myself with a family, seeing myself with a great paying job, seeing myself with a business. Those are the images I wanted to believe, but it was very hard to believe those images when the things that I was looking at in my eyes every day were things that were either opposite of what I hoped for or I was setting my eyes on things that were only destroying me. What do you mean, Joshua? Well, I'll give you a, a kind of a harmless example. If I had you know, set my internal vision on losing weight, for instance, and I want to lose weight, get shredded and make sure that, you know, my body and health are at a certain level for me to operate. Well, it wouldn't do me any any good. It would be a detriment to my goals and my vision if every day I went and just st- and just stared at a piece of cake like this. If I just went and every day, you know, some of my favorite cake, like you know, strawberry cake or you know, you, or, or one of those bunt cakes, like you feeling well, oh, or or pound cake. Oh, okay, I'm gonna stop now. But listen, you get what I'm saying. That doesn't match the goal. That that does not match the vision. And that's what happens when our eyes have a hopeful vision internally. But externally, we set our vision on things that only spark fear. We set our eyes on, on things that only the images that only speak to the opposite of where we want to go. So we have to guard how we water our eyes. If if you want to build a great business, you might want to not spend all your time every day looking at failed businesses. If you want a good relationship, you might not want to spend your time in front of TV watching toxic relationships. Because it's only a matter of time before the things that you're setting your eyes on every day that you're afraid that will come to life actually come to life because you're giving them life. Everything we set our eyes on gives light to that thing. And that light shines into our life. That's why I'm very careful what I what I watch nowadays. I'm very careful when I turn on the news, what headlines I'm paying attention to. I was on YouTube the other night and was about to start hyperventilating because they were talking about the the American dollar and what's happening there and how, you know, the banks and better get your money out of the banks. Now, all those things may be true. But if I'm not careful and that's all I'm paying attention to, it will not be long before I am consumed with fear and all of my moves 
All of my actions are fear-based. And let me tell you something, fear-based actions, you are, you are disregarding. You're disregarding like 99.3% of your brain when you're making fear-based decisions because there's no critical thinking. There's no room for solution to develop. So guard your eyes. Guard what you, what you look at if, if you want to, if you have a future that you are striving towards because you know it's going to help your life thrive, then you want to guard what you set your eyes on. You want to guard the eyes of other people who they try to put their vision on you. Oh, you, how, why do you think you can do that? You, nobody's ever done. You know, there is, a, there is something to be said of wisdom. But you need to know the difference between wise voices, wise eyes in your life, Wise eyes. I like that. We need to like coin that instead of wise guys, wise eyes. You need to be mindful of the wise eyes in your life and the ones who are just projecting their fear. All right. So that's just one. We got to keep got to get more moving a little faster. Here's another one. So when I wrote the first time ears, these two bad boys, you want to be mindful of what you allow through this watering portal. What you allow, and I've probably said this a ton of times, but I think it's appropriate today. How is what you're listening to, how is what you're listening to helping you overcome the fear that you have of going after that thing in your life? If, if it's starting a business, what are you listening to that's making it actually seem and, and painting a clear picture that you can actually do this? If it's finally getting consistent in your life and kicking that that uh, just rut of procrastination, what are you listening to that's giving you encouragement? That's reminding you of who you are. Like really, y'all, like monitor these things. Like really take a look at what you're listening to on the daily. Like sit down at the end of the day and think about all the things you put your ear to throughout the day. And how... Was it feeding your fear or was it feeding your potential, your future? And these sound simple, but that's, it's the simple wins that lead to a bright future. We can go back to that same example I gave you earlier about what you're watching and the images that you allow to be generated in your brain through your eyes that water the seed of fear, but also the things that we listen to. I had a man just now before I... Uh, I got in to do this, this today's uh, episode. I mean, <laughs> this poor guy, he, he's about to buy a house in a whole nother part of Florida where he can have private land because he's expecting the apocalypse. You know? I'm, 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 I'm asking you, what makes you think that? And it's all because of things he's heard. Things that he's allowed to go into his ears and feed the fear in his mind. That now has him making a move to totally isolate himself away from society. He said, I don't want any neighbors. Brother, we ain't meant to live like that. We saw that through COVID. We are not meant to live without human to human contact. But fear will have you thinking that we are. Fear will have you thinking that, oh man, if everybody else is doing this, if everybody else is saying this, it must be true. No, don't fall for the smoke and mirrors. Just because everyone else is thinking their future is dark does not mean you must jump on that bus and pay for your ticket. So guard your ears. Guard what you allow in, in these portals. Next, you want to guard, look at my notes here, guard your environment. Guard your environment. Now, this one's tough because some of you have families that you can't, you can't really help <laughs> but be around them. And I get it. It's tough. But as much as you can, you want to guard the people around you in your circle that speak fear into your life, that speak fear when it comes to your future. And when I, before I, I got up to do this episode, I, I was like wondering, like, what is this all about? 
And I believe sincerely what this is about is that the future that is ahead of all of us, because some say we're about to go into a recession. Some say things are about to get really bad. But can I just tell you, if you are looking at your future that way and your environment perpetuates that um, that same point over and over again, then you might as well accept Yeah, your future is going to look like exactly the environment that you put your, yourself in. But if you decide, you know what? It may be factual that things are going on within our government, things are going on within the economy. But what's true is that I have a mind that is solution driven. I have a future that is big and bright. And my life doesn't have to be a part of the consequences and, and, and one of the casualties, but my life can actually be a part of the solution. And while everyone else is thinking dark and fearful, my life can be thinking bright and thriving. Do you know how many businesses? It, it amazes me when you look at the stats and you look at the, 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 uh, the, um, the statistics through COVID. It's, it's amazing how many, like an, like we had record breaking amounts of millionaires that were born or created, developed during COVID. Record breaking numbers of millionaires that just begin to pop up. Why? Because some environments were thinking fear, 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 fear. This is the end. I can't go outside. I can't do anything. I don't want to touch anybody. I don't want to be around anybody. Fear, fear, fear environment while other people were thinking thriving. This is a time for us to bring solutions to the market. This is a time for us to do some inner work. This is a time for us to rise, to thrive, to not just live a life based on the survival instinct and not have any access to my critical thinking skills. And the difference in those two environments produce two totally different results. Now, some of you may be saying, well, yeah, some of that was uh, some of that was illegal. And yeah, I get it. Yes. Some of it was was evil. But but there are a lot of us who. We came up during the during the, the uh, pandemic. And I'm telling you this because of, for a reason, there, there are more things ahead of our lives. There are more things ahead of your life. But if you allow your environment to just be infected with negativity, then nothing good will be produced from that. And by nothing, I mean nothing in your life, nothing about your future will be produced. That's why some, some have had, we've had, we've also seen on the other side of the spectrum, some of the worst cases of mental health. Because people, when you live in an environment of fear, it, this thing up here, this brain of yours, it does not, it is, fear is not nutrients to the brain. Fear is cancer to the brain. Fear is not nutrients to your future. Fear is cancer to your future. You hear me talk about it all the time about how I don't know it's a starting point. Yeah, because when you look at I, when you look at fear as, an, as an I don't know as a starting point, then you look at it as an environment where you have an opportunity to learn, not an environment where you're hopeless and you don't have anywhere to go. Or uncertainty of what to do. So Make sure you guard that watering outlet or that watering mechanism called your environment. Because if your environment is negative, it will water the seed of fear. If your environment's fear, fear filled, it will water that seed of fear. And only fear will grow because seeds can only produce of themselves. Here's the last one. The last one here is you want to watch how you water your experience. And when I'm talking about experiences, I'm talking solely here in your mind. I'm talking about the experience that you're having up here. One of the things that I discovered recently about anxiety, I find to be probably the, one of the most interesting kind of facts that I've come across in a while and it's this idea, it's this truth, because it's scientifically proven that we can, from where we are, our current stance today, we can send energy into next week. And next week is not even here yet. But we can, right where we are, we can start to live out the experience of next week. 
And some of you do it all the time. You start thinking about that meeting next week that's, that you're dreading it already. That's sending energy into the future. And we do this with our feet. We do this with our future. But we think about where we are now and how much we don't know and how much we are you know, unaware or we can't see clearly our future. And so what we do is we send energy. We send an experience that does not exist. We create it here in our minds because that's where everything is created first. We create it here in our minds and we send it out into the future. And we say, because I don't, because I, I can't see it clear today, that must mean that three to five years from now is going to be really tough. That must mean that tomorrow is going to be really dreadful. And this is part of what I believe is the, the root of what's causing our suicide numbers in our, our, our country to rise. Because people are sending energy of fear because their future doesn't look bright today. They bought into this fear-based lie that their future will look dark tomorrow instead of the truth. The truth is your future is burning bright. I don't care if your, your current day to day seems a little dark. Your future burns bright. So you got to be careful the experiences you water. You got to be careful the experiences you create in your mind that water that seed of fear. Because that seed of fear will only hold your life back from thriving. And let me tell you, look, look at me real close when I tell you this. Your life was not meant to be spent living in survival mode. Your experience was not meant to be spent living in fear. Your environment was not meant to be spent living in fear. Your eyes were not meant to be just looking at fear, fearful things all day, every day. Your ears were not meant to just be hearing. All those things are a cancer to your future. And today it's time that you turn away from all of those fear-based holding you back, survival mode, seed of limitation type fears. And you step forward into a life that is thriving, that is meant to thrive because you're in it. And the way that you were created, you were created to produce great things. That's why the amygdala is an almond sized thing in your brain. It's, it's purpose is relative to its size. It is a small part of your brain because it's only meant to be a small part of your life. Fear is not meant to have a big position in your life. And so I hope today you stop giving it that position. And today you decide that there's nothing to be afraid because my future is bright. There's nothing to be afraid of because my future is bright. I hope this was helpful to someone watching. Uh, I hope that this uh, really helps whoever's in that season where you, you're being held back by fear. Make sure you share this. Make sure you like, subscribe, do all that stuff that we, you know, you do on YouTube. And if you're listening on the podcast, make sure you share this. Our podcast numbers are rising and I'm so happy to see it. Um, and we want to continue that moving so we can continue getting this message out. All right. So thank you for watching, for listening. I'll see you all same time, same place next week. Reminding you that success is your destiny. I'll see you on the next one.